Today, we're talking about internet sensation Gypsy Rose. An elderly couple was found dead in their home with their heater set to have reached temperatures of over a thousand degrees. And a woman was assaulted and impregnated in her sleep by a cruise line staff member. All in this episode of... What's up, Netflix? How goes the Thursday? Ready for the weekend? I am, of course. But you don't care what I've got going on when there are bigger things to deal with. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any updates, and let's get the ball rolling. Today's first story is a blend of tragedy, controversy, and a surprising twist into internet fame. Gypsy Rose Blanchard, a name that has recently dominated social media headlines, has become an internet sensation with over 9 million followers on TikTok. Blanchard, now 32, was released from prison after serving eight years for the murder of her mother, Claudine Blanchard. Her story is complex, involving severe abuse and a controversial conviction. So, okay, so if you haven't heard about Gypsy yet, here's a little rundown. Her mother, Dee Dee, claimed that Gypsy suffered from multiple illnesses throughout her life, including leukemia and muscular dystrophy. As it turns out, Dee Dee was actually suffering from Munchausen syndrome, a mental disorder leading her to subject Gypsy to unnecessary medical treatments. We're talking about a wheelchair, feeding tubes, and getting her salivary glands removed. Gypsy, feeling trapped and desperate, plotted with her then-boyfriend to murder her mother. Now, after eight years, Gypsy's out and has become a top internet influencer. Yep, the same web that helped her plot the murder is now her ticket to fame. She's got millions of followers now, and her first TikTok video alone got over 32 million views. More or less, she went from prisoner to influencer overnight. The internet does love its redemption stories. Now people are rooting for her, calling her queen and angel, you know, doing what the internet does. It's a little like they're seeing her as a symbol of resilience and hope. But let's not forget there's a darker side to this fame. Gypsy's past is obviously a bit controversial, and some might say it's a bit unsettling how quickly she's been embraced as an influencer. So here's something to chew on for a second. How do we balance the need for justice with the potential for personal growth and redemption? And what do you think that could do to somebody's psyche? I mean, think about it. She's gone from a life of imprisonment, both literally and metaphorically, to become an internet sensation. It's a mental war one by any standard. The psychological impact from such drastic change in lifestyle and attention cannot be overstated. I mean, imagine it. One day you're in prison, the next you're an internet queen? I mean, it's a lot for anyone to process. And also a pretty rare occurrence. Gypsy's entire adult life so far has been under scrutiny. First for her mother's abuse, then for her crime, and now for her internet fame. It's like she's living in a fishbowl with millions watching her every move. Oh, Oh, sort of like The Truman Show, which, sidebar, 1010. Please go watch it. Like, right now. Well, after this video anyways. Finish me first, then go watch it. Anyways, this level of attention, while initially affirming, can be incredibly overwhelming. And let's talk about the media's role in all this. Those hawks. It's like they're in a frenzy scrambling over each other for a piece of the Gypsy Rose story. I mean, sure, it's a compelling story, but you've gotta wonder, are they in it for her well-being, or is this just chasing juicy headlines? It's for the headlines. The line between reporting and exploitation can often become blurred in such sensational cases. And here's the million dollar question, what happens when the hype fades? I mean, we've seen it time and time again. The media and the public move on to the next big thing, leaving yesterday's sensation to fend for themselves. How will Gypsy cope when the spotlight dims? Will she be able to use her platform for something more sustainable? Or will she become another cautionary tale of fleeting internet fame? In a tragic turn of events, an elderly couple in South Carolina has been found dead in their home under harrowing circumstances. Joan Littlejohn, 84, and Glenwood Fowler, 82, were discovered after family members, concerned about not having seen them since January 3rd, requested a welfare check. Authorities found temperatures in the home alarmingly high, with the heater reportedly exceeding 1,000 degrees. Can you even imagine this? A routine check turning into a discovery of such a devastating nature? The couple, found in their bedroom, had been found in conditions that most of us couldn't even begin to fathom. The temperature inside their house was over 120 degrees. When the paramedics tried to measure the couple's temperatures, they exceeded 106 degrees. That's beyond extreme, it's catastrophic. It raises tons of questions about safety and well-being, especially for the elderly. And people living by themselves. Like, how does this actually happen? I, I double-checked, and yes, a thousand degrees is correct. Like, how? And here's where it gets even more troubling. The family had been at home just days before to help with the heater. There they noticed the hot water healer's pilot light was out, fixed it, and then left. Kind of makes you wonder, could this tragedy have been prevented? Were there signs that were missed? It, it's a reminder of the importance of regular checks and maintenance, especially when it comes to older appliances and home systems. Oh, and responsibility toward the elderly. Like, how do we ensure that our loved ones are living in safe conditions? How often do we need to check in on them? Especially when they're living alone. And let's talk about the role of technology in all of this. 
In an age where we have smart devices for almost everything, maybe it's time to think about smarter safety measures for our homes, especially for vulnerable sections of our population, like the elderly. Well, at least trying to figure out how to make these things not cost the billions of dollars that they do. Isn't that right, Google? She controls everything in my house and is always watching me now. Lastly today, a West Virginia woman has filed a lawsuit against the Classica Cruise operator, seeking over $75,000 in damages. The lawsuit alleges that a bartender on the cruise, Hubesh Kumar Duki, raped and impregnated her during a May 2023 incident. Well, this is troubling. The victim, identified only as Jane Doe, was aboard the Margaritaville Sea Cruise when the horrific incident occurred, allegedly. According to the complaint, she and her cabin mate, identified as HB, were served by Dookie at the bar. Dookie? Yeah. Well, if it's true, this guy is a piece of shit, so... Appropriately named. They paid through their cabin number, which unfortunately gave the bar staff details of their room and its key. Which, why does it get... How does it give them the key? That what? Jane Doe alleges that Doogie entered their cabin later that night and raped her while she and HB were asleep. Nightmare scenario, if you will. Don't play the drums, editor. What's more, Dookie was already facing charges from a previous accusation by HB of abusive sexual contact, which he pled guilty to back in October. So there's a pattern of behavior. And here's a heart-wrenching detail. Jane Doe claims she was forced to abort the pregnancy resulting from the assault, leading to serious complications and trauma. So this isn't just about the physical harm, it's about the lasting emotional and psychological impact of the victim. Let's talk about the cruise operator's responsibility, shall we? The lawsuit alleges that the Classica cruise operators failed to protect Jane Doe from harm. You know, things like how was the staff vetted, what protocols are there to protect passengers, that sort of stuff. While Margaritaville at sea stated they cooperated with the investigators and terminated the crew member following the incident, the fact that this could have happened in the first place is, well, let's go with alarming. It just goes to show no matter where you are, even on vacation, your safety is never guaranteed. Just remember, stay vigilant and aware, even in settings that seem safe and controlled. And to anyone that's been a victim of a sexual abuse, Remember, it's not your fault, and there are resources and support available to help you through a traumatic experience. And on that note, we're gonna end it today. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Now, uh, do me a solid and hit that like button. Don't forget to enjoy your three-day weekend, and until next time, stay weird, stay safe, and I'll see you when I see you.